Hello, welcome to another web coding tutorial. Today, we're going to be making this. Okay, so we're not really going to make that. What you just saw was Apple's website from 1997. Now, the reason I showed you that is because we're going to talk a little bit today about how websites are structured and how they used to be structured. Okay, so here's our actual project for today. So this is what we're going to be making. It's nice and clean, simple. It's exactly the kind of four column layout that you would find on a contemporary website. We've got a header, a main section with four columns in it, and a footer at the bottom. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Let's get on with it. So before we get into coding today, I want to talk a little bit about that Apple website. Now you might be thinking, how are we able to look at a website that's over 20 years old? It's using a web archiving service called the Wayback Machine. Now the Wayback Machine is a web archive that takes regular snapshots of the internet. So if you've ever wondered what a particular website looked like five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, have a look on the Wayback Machine and you might just find out. Let's have another look at Apple's website from 1997. Now I've already got the inspector open. We can see that the entire site is contained within a table element. This is the table just like you'd make on a PowerPoint slide, rows, columns. Now the table tag was never intended for this purpose. It was never intended to be used to make a whole website. But in the early days of the internet, web developers realized that the most reliable way to get your site to look the way you wanted it across the available browsers was to use the table tag. Fast forward to 2005, and we can see that the table tag is still being used, but just for the navigation, we can see the rest of the site has been divided up using the div tag. On to 2009, now the table tags have completely disappeared by this point. The entire site is divided up with the use of the div tag. So on to 2012, and now we're starting to see the use of more modern tags. So we've got the nav tag, article, aside, footer, and of course we've still got div tags. And now on to Apple's current website, and we can see much more consistent use of these modern tags with a side, a nav, main, footer, and divs are used within those to further divide the page. So have a quick look at this code pen that I've set up. You can see that I've got a div tag at the top, and then I've created a header, main, footer, section, nav, article, aside, and I've just put the name of the tag inside each one so that you can see them over here. If I was just to give some style to one of them, say the div, just so we can see it a bit better on the page, that div is literally a horizontal slice. It's a division across the page. But the thing is, if I was to do the same thing with any other tag, there's footer, aside, they all seem to be doing exactly the same thing. And in fact, if I inspect, you can see that the only style being applied down here by the browser is display block. And if I click on each of them in turn, you can see that they are all just display block. So in fact, all these other tags, aside, article, nav, etc., are all doing functionally the same job as the div tag. So why do we have all of these different tags that do the same job? Take a look at these two examples. They're structurally identical, but I think you'll agree the one on the right is a lot clearer. So instead of having a page of divs with classes, we have something that's a lot more straightforward. There's actually a name for these newer tags. They're called semantic elements, which basically means that the name of the tag reflects the content that you're putting into it. So now that you understand a little bit more about how websites are structured, let's take another look at our project for today and break it down. So we'll take it from the top. That red bit is obviously a header, so we're gonna use the header tag. All of that content underneath, I'm going to group it together inside of a main. Now, if this was a scrolling website that had more bits just like this, I might use the section tag, but keeping it simple, main will do. This chunk at the bottom, it's obviously a footer, so let's use the footer tag. Now let's go inside that main and see how we can divide this up. Now I could use another div to contain those two bits of text at the top, but I'm going to keep it simple. We'll just go for a big heading and a smaller heading. Now all of this content belongs together, so let's put that inside a div. Now let's go inside that div and see how we can divide this up. Now if I was to take all of these images and put them together inside a div, that would be wrong. 
we have to make sure that we group content appropriately. So each of these images is supposed to go with the text below it. So that's how we're going to divide them up. And in fact, we've got four of those. And we'll use CSS to make sure that they sit next to each other. Now we can go inside just one of those and divide this up even more. And this is straightforward. We've got an image at the top. Then we've got another heading. So using an H3 this time, another heading, and then a paragraph. So that's one of those done, but remember we need four of those in total. So our finished HTML looks like that. So we've gone through the whole page, dividing it up from top to bottom. Hopefully that web structure makes sense. Okay, so let's pop that HTML into CodePen and start fleshing it out. I'll put a link down in the description so that you can open it up and follow along. So we'll start by styling the header I want this to have a height of 60 pixels and for the background color I've already chosen my background color but feel free to open up the color picker that I showed you last time and use that I want that kind of pinky reddy color there we go I'm now going to get rid of that margin that we have on the body again I've talked about this before margin zero for the main all I'm going to do is give it a height. This is just so that the footer gets pushed down to the bottom of the page. And for the footer, I want a height of 200 pixels and I want a nice dark background. Something like that will do. So now let's go inside the header and we're going to pop some placeholder text in here. I'm going to create a div for this. And I'm just going to put logo here. So let's improve the look of that text. Going to go inside my header. Let's change the size of the text. Going to make it 32 pixels. And we'll change the color. Let's go for white. And I want to center it vertically. So I'm going to use that line height trick that I showed you last time. There we go. And I just want to move it in a little bit. So I'm going to put a little bit of padding on the left, maybe 15 pixels. There we go. Okay, so now let's move on to the main section. Let's start putting some content in here. So in here, we're gonna put check out this awesome column layout. But you could type whatever you want. For the H2, I'm gonna put uh, let's get on with it, but you could type whatever you want. So now that we've got some text on the page, this would be a good time to change the font. In previous videos, I've just used Helvetica, which is a nice, clean, modern font that's installed on most people's computers. But today, I want to use a custom font. To do this, I'm gonna head over to Google Fonts. I'll pop a link in the description. Now, to use fonts from Google, it's really straightforward. First of all, you look for the fonts that you want. Now, it's a good idea not to use too many fonts on your page. So I'd recommend one font for your titles and another font for the body text. Now, for my headings, I want to use Railway. Here it is, I'm gonna click on it. And then you wanna choose the styles that you want. Now you can always come back and change this, but I know that I want weight 300 and weight 400. So I'm only gonna select those two. I'm gonna head back to Browse, and for my body text, I'm gonna use Roboto. And I want just regular 400, so I'll add that. And you can see all the fonts that you've selected over here on the right hand side. Now you can download them, these are all free fonts. You can download them and install them on your computer, but what we need to do is make sure that the user of our site has got them. So we're gonna to go to the embed option and I'm gonna show you where you need to put this code. So first of all, we'll grab the link from the top here. You just need to copy that, head over to your web page, open up this cog here next to HTML and in this bit where it says stuff for the head tag, just go ahead and paste it in. That's all you've gotta do, now click away. Head back here, and down here, these are the CSS properties you need to use in order to make these fonts show up on the page. So let's go ahead and grab that one. So let's put railway font onto the page. What I'm actually gonna do is go into the body tag and paste it in there. So I've actually just made all the text on my entire site railway, which is fine because I actually want the header as well as four heading tags to all have railway fonts. And what I'll do is put the Roboto font onto just the paragraph. So let's go and do some more styling on those H1 and H2 tags. So 
I'm going to go after my main tag. I'm going to begin by aligning both of them in the center. Now there's a little trick here. If you want to style multiple elements with the same style, you can actually comma separate them. So if I say H1, H2, that means style both those elements with this style. So I'm going to use text align center, and you'll see that they'll both now center on the page. There we go. I'm also going to set the font weight for both of these to 400. Now the H2 needs to be smaller than that. So let's make a separate style for the H2. And I'm going to set the font size for this to 16 pixels. And I'm also going to change the color here. So we've reached the point in our code where I now need to talk about classes. If we look over in our HTML, we can see that we've got several divs going on. And I need to be able to style these divs independently. If I go down into my CSS and just type div, it's going to be styling this div here, this div, this div. All the divs will get the same style. So I want this div here, which is the one that wraps around all four of these, remember, to have its own style. So I'm going to go inside the opening tag for the div space, and I'm going to give it a class attribute. So I could put anything I want in here as a class name, but it makes sense to use a class name that actually tells you what's in the div in the same way that we're using semantic elements. So I'm going to use whole container. Notice how I've put a hyphen and not a space. Very important because if you put a space inside your class name, that does something a little bit different. So col hyphen container, that describes what this div does. It's a container for the four columns that are inside it. So now that I've done that, I can style that div with a class of col container by saying dot col container. So anything with a class of col container will get this style. Let's start by making it so that we can see it. So let's give it a width and I'm going to choose 960 pixels. I'm going to give it a height of 100% and I'm going to give it a background color pink. So there we go, we can clearly see that on the page now. Remember that's going to contain those four vertical divs. The reason why I've put all of that inside a container is because that allows me to move that container along and center the whole thing on the page. And I can do that by setting the left and right margins to be automatic. So now that whole container is pushed into the middle and therefore the four divs that are inside it will also be in the middle. Now if you're wondering why I chose 960 pixels, that might seem like a bit of a random number and feel free to change it to something else. 960 of course is easily divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12 etc. So it's a good width to use if you know you're going to be creating columns. So if this div here was my col container, it makes sense that the four divs inside are going to be cols. So each of these I'm going to give a class of col. And what I'm going to do is just copy that col from there and paste that into each of the four divs. So they are all going to be identical. So now I can go down into my CSS and I'm going to style those, so dot col. Now I need each of these columns to have a width that is one quarter of 960 pixels. So that's actually 240 pixels. At the moment, of course, we can't see this div. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a height. Let's just put 100% and set a background color. Let's go blue, just to make it visible on the page. There it is. We can clearly see that it's taking up a quarter of the container. Now, if I scroll the page down, we can see that actually there are four divs they're stacked one above the other, because remember, they are block elements. We need these four divs to sit next to each other in a line. And the way that we're gonna do that is by applying a property called float. And I'm gonna tell them to float left. So each one is now floating beside the previous one. Now, they're still quite difficult to see, but I want to prove to you that they are actually there. So I'm gonna go inside each of these and just put some text in the headings so that you can see them. There we go. Now we can clearly see that we've got four columns sitting inside of this container. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the ABCD and the blue and the pink that I applied because that was just so that we could visualize the structure. So now let's go ahead and start putting some content inside those four divs and as we do this you'll start seeing them appear on the page. So let's start by putting the text into the two headings and you can put anything you want in there remember this is just a kind of template site that we're making. So I'm just going to put main heading there and subheading there and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that into all four. So I'm happy with the style of the H3, but I do want to change the look of that H4. So back into my CSS, I'm going to go up here where I've been doing stuff with the heading tags. So H4, and what I want to do is change the font size to make this smaller. I'm going to go for 14 pixels. I'm going to change the font weight to 300, so it's slightly thinner. And then also change the color and I'm using the same color as the header so that it matches. So now it's time to put some text into those paragraphs and I just want 25 words of kind of random dummy text. Now I could go into here and just start typing stuff like this and that's going to give me some text on the screen but it just doesn't look very good. So web developers as well as people who work in print publishing, magazines etc, they tend to use something called lorem ipsum text. Now I've got a website open here, I'll pop a link down in the description. This website will actually generate random made up Latin text that you can put into your website. This text doesn't actually mean anything. If you were to put it into a Latin translator it's just garbled nonsense. But what it does do is actually give you realistic word lengths, commas, full stops. It looks like proper text on the page. So what I need to do is change the paragraphs to words. I want 25 words. Hit generate. I can now copy that text from there. Head back to my site. Paste it in. I'm just going to start it with a capital letter. End it with a full stop. Now what I'm not going to do is paste that same text into the other three paragraphs because on a real website these four columns would contain different text. So I'm going to generate different lorem ipsum text for each one. And there we go, we've now got dummy text in all four of our paragraphs. Now that we've got text in those paragraphs, I want to go ahead and change the font because right now those paragraphs are using the railway font because I put that style onto the body tag which affects everything. So I'm going to go after my H4 tags, P to style all the paragraphs and if I head back to Google Fonts this is the style that I need. Let's take it from there, go ahead and paste that in and there we go. Now my paragraphs are using Roboto font. Now I do want to style these a little bit more. I'm going to make the colour a kind of dark grey colour, just gives it a nice modern feel. I'm also going to change the font size just to make it a little bit smaller. So I'll go for 14 pixels. I'm also going to adjust the line height. So we used line height up in the header to make that text center vertically. But of course when you use it on a whole paragraph of text it has the effect of spreading out all of the lines. So I'm going to set this to be 1.6 and there we go that just spreads that text out nicely. Now you'll notice at the moment that those four columns are sitting right next to each other. They're sandwiched right together and it just doesn't look very nice. Ideally we'd have a nice gap in between so that we allow space around those elements. So we can do that by going onto our four columns and applying some padding to the left and right. Padding, remember, puts space on the inside of something, so it's going to have the effect of pushing in all of the text and giving us a nice gap around the outside. But what we need to bear in mind is that whenever you apply padding to something, that padding gets added to the height and width of the element. Let me show you what I mean. So if I put padding of 15 pixels on the left and a padding of 15 pixels on the right, you'll see that our fourth column has been pushed down below because each of these columns, which was previously 240 pixels wide, exactly a quarter of the container, now each of these columns is 240 plus the 15 either side. So actually each of these columns is now 270 pixels 
and there isn't enough room for four columns that are 270 pixels wide. So the answer is simply to change the width to accommodate that padding that we've included. So if I want 30 pixels of padding, I need to take 30 pixels off the width. So let's make each of these 210 pixels. There we go. So hopefully you'll agree that with the padding in those columns, it looks a lot neater, it's a lot easier to read. So now let's go ahead and pop some images in. Now I'm gonna do something similar with the images that I did with the paragraphs. I want placeholder images. So I know that I want these images to be square, and I also know that the width needs to be 210 pixels so that it will fit in the column without pushing the content out of the way. There are actually lots of websites that will provide dummy images for you to use in your web project. I'm gonna use this one. It's called placeimage.com. It's really straightforward. All you've got to do is type in the dimensions that you want, like that, and it will generate a link that you can then put into the source attribute of your image tag. So what I'm gonna do is copy this from here, head over to my HTML. Let's just go inside the first image tag, give it a source attribute and paste that in. Now one thing to bear in mind here is that each time you refresh the page, it will actually fetch a different image from placeimage.com. So they're gonna keep changing, but that's fine. So now let's go ahead and paste that into all of the image tags. Now I don't like the fact that all four images are the same. What's happening here is that the browser is downloading one of the images and caching it, it's saving it. And then it's displaying the same image four times. But I can actually force the browser to download that image four times. If I go into the source attribute for each image and do this, I'm gonna put question mark one on the first one, question mark two on the next one, question mark three, and then question mark four. So what I've actually done there is add what's called a URL query to each of those URLs. I'm not gonna go into exactly what that means, but you can see that it has now forced the browser download four separate images, which looks much better for our template. Now at this stage, we're nearly done. I just wanna tidy this up a little bit by adjusting some of the spacing around the headings at the top. So let's go back to the H1 and H2 tags in our CSS. And what I'm gonna do is apply some margin bottom to the H2 so that all the content below it gets pushed down. Let's try 32 pixels. So now there's a bit more space around it, which looks good. I also want a bit more space above that first heading. I could put some margin onto the H1, but actually what I'm gonna do is go to the main tag and apply some padding top. So this is actually gonna put some space on the inside of the main, pushing the content down. And again, we'll go for 32 pixels. And that is our finished four column layout. There you go, another web project complete. Hopefully you managed to follow along okay. I do just wanna point out that the website you just made had a static width, which means that if you were to resize the browser, those columns would start to go off the page. Now most modern websites are developed in such a way that when you resize the browser, the content actually moves around so that nothing ever goes off the page and the website looks good on tablets and mobile phones. This is something called responsive design. Now in my next video, we're gonna be doing a slightly longer project, which is fully responsive. See you then.